you know, NCAA rules and restrictions on when that coach can actually reach out, whether it's after your sophomore year, into your junior year. That is not when recruiting actually starts. And that's a big distinction that a lot of families need to know that just because college coaches cannot reach out to you, it doesn't mean they're not recruiting your graduating class. So uh, let's give some examples. As a former Division One coach, as a recruiting coordinator, someone that was uh, you know, responsible for managing the recruitment of athletes at those Division One programs. Um, first and foremost, I'm gathering a list. I know what my, my school is about. I know what the selling points of that academic institution are. I know what my program is about. I know what my philosophy is as a coach. I am identifying and evaluating prospects that are going to fit that criteria. Right. So number one is just, you know, gathering that list of who am I initially interested in and that, a lot of times for me, was going to happen at least a year in advance of the contact period, right? So if you take June 15th after your high school sophomore year, um, you know, I was probably building that list in that athlete's freshman year or towards the end of their freshman year. So uh, I needed a legitimate outlet to be able to identify and evaluate prospects. I needed to do evaluate their grades, maybe learn a little bit more about what their interests were take a look at their video. In a lot of cases for these high school athletes that was happening in, in the end of their freshman year, the summer going into their sophomore year, and certainly by the time they were in sophomore year, that first semester was huge for me as a division one recruiting coordinator. So just again, figuring out who those athletes are gonna be. Uh, and then, you know, I'm starting to make some light contact as it was permissible by the NCAA. So I would send out a questionnaire please enter your information into my recruiting database so I know that you're interested and I, as the coach, can track my communications with you. Um, camp invites, that's another big one that a lot of athletes are gonna see in many sports is just that coach running a camp or clinic over the summer in which they can invite you to that camp or clinic and see what you're capable of doing um, on the pitch, on the field, in the pool, whatever it might be. So um, that's gonna be a big part of it or just sending out generic uh, information about that school, pamphlets and brochures that the admissions department was putting out for any prospective student, I could send that to, to a student athlete to get them interested in my school. Um, next step is really just conducting evaluations. So kind of going through that list and saying, look, these athletes are going to be top scorers for us. Uh, they are going to be productive at the conference level and potentially the national level. You know, these are our priority athletes, um, you know, just you know, maybe making a list, a tiered list of when we want to communicate our interest to those athletes and where we want to focus our attention and who's going to be most important for us in that grad class. Um, eventually, as we start to get into the contact period, you know, these coaches are going to extend verbal offers. They're going to extend uh, scholarship offers. They're going to extend offers to come to campus with that school, the athletic department, that program is going to uh, actually pay for that athlete to be there. Uh, with the Division One levels, you get five official visits where that coach is going to pay for you to be on that campus and have a good experience. And then, of course, you know, later down in the line, later in junior year, uh, and then certainly senior year, you're going to be signing the national letter of intent, meaning that you're claiming that scholarship and you're going to be at that school for at least a year. So, Phil, you know, to your point, you know, we talked a lot about those recruiting deadlines or, or timelines on which coaches can actually have communication, but you and I both know that that communication or, or that, that process is going to start well in advance of the communication period. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Click our logo to subscribe to our channel and check out the other videos on our page for all things recruiting.